Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Monday, everybody. I hope you had a restful weekend, and as always, have a productive week ahead. Over the weekend, 600 military leaders, policymakers, and analysts from 40 nations met in Singapore for the so-called Shangri-La Dialogue, a Track One Intergovernmental Security Conference held annually by the London-based think tank, the International Institute for Strategic Studies. Today's video will focus on the developments from this forum. Tensions were especially high going into this year's meeting, while Ukraine was top on the agenda. Sino-American relations generally, and Chinese security moves specifically, especially for the Asia-Pacific nations in attendance, represented a major concern too. Speaking a day before the three-day meeting began in Singapore, former Malaysian Foreign Minister Saifuddin Abdullah expressed, "Quote: A lot of us in Southeast Asia are very nervous about Taiwan. Seriously, we are very nervous." End quote. As we know, Beijing rebuffed a U.S. request for Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and his counterpart Li Shangfu to meet. The U.S. has been requesting the talks for months, but Beijing wants the sanctions that the U.S. put on Li before he was Defense Secretary in 2018 removed. On this point, Austin expressed, quote, "I'm sure that I'm personally sanctioned in Russia, but I can, if I want, speak with Russia's Defense Minister regardless." End quote. The two did shake hands on Friday, though. While communications between the U.S. and Chinese militaries are poor, just before the formal opening of the event, Singapore announced that it and the PRC had penned a new bilateral defense agreement, which includes a hotline between the two militaries. Singapore, being a former British colony and naval base, as well as a country with a large ethnic Han Chinese population. Is one of the few nations in the world which enjoys relationships of mutual respect with both the Chinese-speaking world and the Anglophone world. Singaporean leaders also understand the critical necessity a stable region means for their country's ongoing prosperity. Perhaps the new hotline is, in part, intended to act as an emergency informal mechanism by which the U.S. and Chinese militaries could communicate during a crisis. Leading into the Shangri-La dialogue, the framing of the event by state media for its domestic audience in China is notable too. Take this, for example, from the state-run Global Times on Thursday. Quote. In sharp contrast to the U.S., that's continuing to hype up the China threat at the defense summit as it has been ramping up its efforts to maintain its hegemony in the Asia Pacific by accelerating the introduction of NATO-like security structures in the region. China will actively promote a sustainable, balanced, and comprehensive security initiative. End quote. And in another piece, quote. The U.S. has been trying to manipulate other Asian countries to follow its security blueprint and introduce more European countries to the region to make sure its proposals have a broader acceptance in the Asia Pacific region. End quote. This suggests that Beijing elites are concerned that indeed Asian nations will, with Europeans, increase scrutiny of China's military moves and shift closer to U.S. positions. Okay, now let's turn to the three-day. Shangri-La dialogue event itself on Saturday, as Pentagon Chief Lloyd Austin gave his keynote address at the event, the U.S. and Canadian navies sailed ships through the Taiwan Strait. During his speech, Austin expressed, "Quote: Conflict is neither imminent nor inevitable. Deterrence is strong today, and it's our job to keep it that way. The whole world has a stake in maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. The security of commercial shipping lanes and global supply chains depend on it, and so does freedom of navigation worldwide. Make no mistake, conflict in the Taiwan Strait would be devastating. End quote. The following morning on Sunday, it was PRC Defense Minister Li Shangfu's turn for his keynote address. Li said the world is quote far from tranquil and dominated by a resurgent Cold War mentality. End quote. Adding quote, some country is expanding military bases, reinforcing military presence, and intensifying an arms race. 
end quote, without referring to the US by name. The general ideas and flavor of his speech was largely consistent to what we have already followed in state media, though Lee did also add a warning that militaries should stay out of the waters and airspace near China's borders. Quote, the best way to prevent conflict from happening is that military vessels and aircraft should not come close to our waters and airspace. What does this have to do with your security? Watch your own territorial waters and airspace. Then there will not be any problems. End quote. We remember earlier this week the Pentagon released a video of an encounter between a US reconnaissance plane and a People's Liberation Army Air Force fighter jet. We are certainly living in interesting times. The BRICS association led by China is seeking to undermine the dominance of the US dollar. Traditional US allies Saudi Arabia is growing closer to Beijing, putting doubt on the petrodollar system that is the foundation of the dollar, and the West's sanctioning of Moscow for its invasion of Ukraine has fueled Russian calls for the use of other currencies and forms of exchange. And all this could just be the start. At uncertain and unstable times like these, the smart money turns to a tried and true move. Gold. And that is exactly the reason why today's video sponsor, US Gold Mining Inc., is an incredible opportunity for any savvy investor looking to capitalize on these historic trends. US Gold Mining is a newly minted exploration and gold development company focused on unlocking the sustainable value of the Whistler Gold Copper Project located in Alaska, USA. US Gold Mining completed an IPO in April 2023, listed on the NASDAQ, and raised 20 million US dollars to be used for exploration and mining studies of the Whistler project. Tim Smith, the CEO, is a professional geoscientist with over 25 years of experience in mineral exploration and mining. He has a track record of discovery and mine development of major gold systems in Australia and Canada with junior, mid-tier and major mining companies, including Gold Corp. He was previously the VP of Exploration at Kamenik Gold, which was acquired by the world's largest gold company for 520 million Canadian dollars several years ago. And there is a big opportunity with US gold mining. Currently, the market is valuing US gold mining's 9.4 million ounces of gold reserves equivalent at only 10 US dollars an ounce, compared with a global median of about 40 US dollars an ounce and the last three buyouts in this region in 2020, 2021, and 2022 happened at over 100 US dollars an ounce. Clearly, US gold mining can make an excellent addition to any well diversified portfolio. So, if you're looking to take advantage of these historic geopolitical trends we are witnessing and what it means for gold, check out US Gold Mining Inc. on the NASDAQ. We remember that all investment involves risk. This is not individual investment advice. Always speak to an investment professional before making any major investment. A big thank you to US Gold Mining Inc. for sponsoring this episode of China Update. Okay, now returning to regular content. Of course, we expected tough words to be employed between the Americans and the Chinese at the event. What was a little unexpected, however, was a swipe at the Europeans by Beijing. Former ambassador to the United States, Tsui Tiankai, criticized Europe's mismanagement of its own security situation, bluntly telling the European representatives, quote, the best thing you can do for us is to do nothing, end quote, adding, quote, we should also learn something very important something from your lack of success in your own region." End quote. Meanwhile, senior defense officials from the Five Eyes Intelligence Sharing Bloc of the UK, US, Canada, Australia and New Zealand met on the sidelines of the forum to discuss, quote, the importance of working together to enhance collective resilience, end quote, according to an official statement. On Saturday, in an interview with US media, Australia's defense minister expressed, quote, we are seeing a very significant build-up of China's military, and that's happening without a sense of strategic reassurance to us, or to the region and the world, about its purpose. So, we have got our issues." End quote. As we just noted, Singapore is in a unique place to provide advice respected by both Beijing and Washington. So let's end today's video with observations and comments from the Singapore Minister of Defense. Quote, no country, I think, wants war, but our working assumptions and scenarios must be that unplanned incidents can occur. Communication, both formal and informal, 
must exist so that when these unplanned incidents occur, those channels can be used to de-escalate and avoid conflict. Obviously, we would have liked a better understanding, and obviously the elephant in the room was the US-China relationship. You can't solve any problem without both of them coming into solution making or finding a path forward. Not having communications between adversaries is like F1 drivers on the same circuit driving blindfolded. You better be careful. End quote. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much everybody for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow.